Hey, Rockstars, Lidshaw, and welcome to Recording Studio Rockstars. Thanks for joining our YouTube channel. On uh, this video, I want to show you a really cool way you can take your existing tracks that you've already recorded in your studio and enhance them to make them sound a whole lot cooler using one single piece of gear. <laughs> This is the VTRC Varitube recording channel from Tegeler Audio Manufactoire, and this thing sounds awesome. While you're here, if you haven't been here before, please remember to subscribe to this channel, like this video, hit the notification bell so you can hear more videos when we put them out here at Recording Studio Rockstars, and drop a comment in below and let us know what you think about this. So this piece of gear is called the Varitube Recording Channel from Tegeler Audio Manufactoire. It is a beautiful all-in-one recording channel. Sometimes people refer to these as like a channel strip where you have a microphone input, a line input, you've got built-in EQ and compression and an output level so that you can record something directly through it, but you can also take tracks that already exist in your sessions, in your DAW, and re-record them through this unit to enhance the sound and get a really awesome, awesome tone. So that's what I'm gonna dig into today on this video. I'm gonna show you how I can take a bunch of different tracks from a session that I've done with my band. We have a project in here called Moonshine, and I'm gonna take these tracks and run some of them out through the VTRC so that you can hear exactly how it sounds. Also, if you're enjoying this video, please remember to check out Tegeler Audio Manufactoire at the website link below. They just got a ton of great gear and it's well worth your time to check it out. And something you should know about Tegeler Audio Manufactoire too is that they offer a 14 day, no commitment, free trial. So if you want to check out one of these pieces of gear and you're seriously considering whether or not it's right for your studio, you can simply go to their website, fill out the form, they can ship you a unit for you to check out. And if you decide you want to keep it, which you probably will, then you just go ahead and purchase it. But if not, you can always return it back to Tegeler and um, you can try a different one, you know? So check them out. It's a great company. And let's jump in and check out the VTRC. So on the back of the unit, you actually have two XLR jacks. You have a mic input and a line level input, which you can use. And then you can hit this switch to choose which one you want to go through. But on the front, you also have an XLR combo jack, which is super handy. You can plug a microphone directly into this unit and just get recording right away. Or you can use the uh, combo jack tip sleeve, you know, uh, instrument jack here, quarter inch, and plug your bass in or plug in a guitar to record. So that's very hip. Um, I think recording bass through this thing would sound awesome. So this is, you know, it's got great, great tube tone and everything. So it's going to be great for that. But um, those are your inputs. Um, on the back, of course, you also have a line level XLR output. And then there's a jack for stereo linking two of these units together in case you want to uh, have two of them running as a stereo pair. So meanwhile, once we're in this thing, we actually have two different gain knobs. And essentially, this is an input knob that is clean. So if you wanna get a very pure input, that has no coloration, you might start with something like that and then begin to gain this up. It's kind of like, you could almost think about it like a master volume on an amp and then a gain volume that, you know, that can get your guitar more crunchy, even though there's also an additional uh, master output over here. But what's so cool about this is you can back down the clean input and you can boost up the gained input and this will give you a much fatter coloration on your sound. So if you want to increase the harmonic content and that kind of stuff, it's really great for doing that. Uh, this thing is also transformer input and output so that you have a great transformer saturation tone if you want to. So that's super cool. Next up here, you've got, of course got a plus 48 volt phantom switch which will put phantom power either on the mic on the face of this or on the XLR mic input on the back. Um, both those mic inputs, I believe, are actually parallel tied together so that you, you need to choose which one you want, one versus the other, but they are actually just connected physically inside this box too. Uh, next up, you've got a low cut. So you can actually uh, bypass it by going all the way down. 
you can cut everything below 160 hertz on your sound or cut everything below 80 hertz on your sound. So that can be really, really handy because a lot of times with proximity effect as we're recording, we can get a lot of boominess out of our mics and this helps just roll some of that off and you know rebalance the sound the way you want it. Of course, you can just put it out and have no low cut, so you're passing all the low end through, which is great. Next switch up here is um, a polarity switch. So this would be normal phase, and if you wanted to flip the polarity, um, you know, flipping the phase is one way we, we describe it too. You can just flip it to 180 and it's going to reverse the peak. So this can be really handy when you're checking your mic against other mics and you want to make sure that you're picking the correct phase polarity so that the phase relationship between the different mics works out well. But um, that's super groovy. So then next up, you've got the EQ here where you can actually bypass it and not use any of the EQ because this whole section right here is the e se EQ section. Essentially, you're getting a Pultec style EQ that has a low frequency boost, a high frequency boost, and a mid band cut. So if you want to cut your mid bands, here I'll even start where it's sort of zeroed out. This would be no low boost, and then you'd begin to boost the lows like that. This would be no high boost if it's at zero, or you can start to boost the highs, and this would be no mid cuts until you roll it back and begin cutting the mids. So it's just a good way to like kind of sculpt and scoop, scoop out your tones and stuff. Um, there's a lot of instruments where you might find it really useful to sort of give it a, a smiley face curve and, and take some of the mids out too. But you obviously wouldn't do that for everything. You just so selectively do that depending on what you're recording and, and whether it's useful for you or not. Um, next up, you can determine whether you want the EQ to happen before the compressors or the compressor here before the EQ. So I haven't even got to this section, but this right here is your compression section. So this, this entire area right here is just for compression. Basically, you have double compressors in this. You've got a very tube, which is a very mu compressor. Um, think about things like um, the Manly tube compressor, for example. That's a, that's a very mu compressor. And then you have an opto compressor over here, and that would be similar to um, a, an LA-2A, for example, where it uses an optical circuit to compress. So super cool, in one unit, you've got double compression. You've got tube compression here and an opto compressor. So you can actually flip each of these in, see what you think with the sound, decide if you want to use one or the other or both. And then over here, you have a speed control for the compression. So slow is going to give you a slow attack on your sound. This would be a great choice if you want to let transients come through for percussive sounds or drums or something that really punches through. Fast is going to grab that, that sound and begin to compress it more quickly. Um, and then auto is actually going to adjust itself to follow the, the uh, speed of your sound, basically. So if you have a, a sound that is, you know, a quick transient and releasing quickly, it might try and, you know, lean towards fast or something. And then if it's hanging in there more and you, and you want to keep it compressed longer, it will, cons it, it will recognize that and, and do a slower release time. But the, the beauty of this is you don't really have to understand this at all, quite honestly. All you need to do is listen to the sounds with these different settings and see what you think. So then the rest of the compression here, you've got um, the compression knob, which right here just basically is like a threshold. So it's a set ratio, but this is adding more compression. And when your meter over here is set to show gain reduction, it's set on compress, then the more you turn this to the right, the more you're gonna see that needle compressed to the left. And again, you're gonna just use your ears and see if you like the sound of that compression. Um, then you also have an output knob right here, which just simply sets the output gain for this entire unit. Um, over here for the meter, you can check the preamp meter. So you can sort of check your levels going in on this, this part of the section. You can check your EQ meter. So this would probably put the meter just post EQ so that if you're boosting a lot of gain here, you can see if you're beginning to go start crunching and going to the red. And then you have an output or excuse me, a compression 
uh, meter right here, which will show you as you crank up the compression, it's gonna act like a gain reduction meter and start moving to the left from the zero point. And then of course you have output, which just simply lets you set this output level so you can control your levels. So that's really handy when you're doing a bunch of things in one box and you wanna make sure that you're sort of not screwing up the sound somewhere accidentally. And then over here, you've got your power switch for on and off. Um, brings up the little power light. It's nice and mellow, so it's not gonna blind you in the studio. And um, that's everything. Let me jump back into the EQ and talk about that for a minute. Um, with these two shelve EQs, the lows and the highs, you've got a bunch of different frequencies. So, so this low frequency will give you 80, 120, 200, 300, 500, 700, or 1K. So you can actually, go to 1K and boost as a shelf everything below there. So that could be really handy, um, especially if you begin to cut things like 160, you know, and then, um, you know, set this above and then boost it, you're gonna get like a bump in your EQ curve, but it's still gonna be, uh, it's still gonna be rolled off below 160. So that can be a really great way to do combinations and sort of get a, an enhanced bump at certain frequencies. High frequencies, same thing with this passive, uh, pull textile EQ, you can basically crank this thing and set any one of these frequencies for a shelf above that and they all sound great and super transparent. It starts out at 1.5, then does 2K, 3K, 4K, 5K, 7K, 10K, 12K, 16K, 20 kilohertz, and 24 kilohertz, which is even above the threshold of human hearing. So the beauty of having this super high frequency is it's an air frequency. You can start to boost this way up here, and while you may not hear an, you know, an aggressive high-end boost, what you do hear is you hear it opening up the top end of your, of your music, of your sound, um, and that can be a really sweet effect. Then, of course, with the mid-range, you got 200, 300, 500, 700, 1K, one and a half, 2K, 3K, 4K, 5K, and 7K. So basically, you have some features here that are pretty handy. You can, if I'm doing a kick drum, for example, I might find that there's uh, a, like a boxiness or a you know basketball quality around 200 hertz, and this can be really handy to suck that out and pull it back like that. If I've got a sound that's just kind of lumpy in the mids or somewhere like that, this can be really handy to scoop some of that out and kind of clean it up and make your sound a little less harsh, and then, Interestingly, when we get up to things like 7K, we're, we're now in a frequency that is really handy when you're trying to DS a vocal. So I didn't get into this yet, but let me explain this. If you have the EQ switch on, then you can select here with this knob, EQ before compression or compression before EQ. But if you go to bypass with the EQ and this knob is still up, what's fascinating is they've set this up where this becomes a side chain for the compressor. So that's pretty much a breakdown of what's going on with this. Let's go into my session, start feeding some tracks through it and find out how this thing sounds, all right? Cool, dig it. So we're gonna jump into this and what I'm starting with is a session that I've done with my band when a bunch of my friends came down to record. This is a project called Moonshine. We're actually taking Chris King's poems and Sean McGovern is singing in it. It's a lot of fun. I get to play a lot of guitar. And this is one of my favorite tracks off the record that we're working on now called Imperfect Love. So that's me on the, the acoustic guitar and the electric guitar um, and a handful of my other best friends playing bass, drums, and stuff like that. So uh, I've got some different things that we can go through. We're going to check out some drums through the VTRC. We'll check out some percussion. We'll run bass through it. We'll run electric guitar through it. Um, I've got an organ I can run through there, acoustic and vocals. So that should give us a nice um, perspective on it. Um, again, the VTRC that I have is a mono unit. So I'm only going to take mono tracks and run through. So if any of the stereo ones, I'll just skip past them. But I think that'll give us plenty to go check out. So let's just jump in and see what we got. What I've got right now set up for this is, um, you know, here's my session with all the multi-tracks. Let me see if I can like uh, free up a little more real estate on the screen. Um, and for example, here's a kick drum track, the inside kick beater track. And, and if I want to, I'm gonna solo that. And this is the sound of that kick just raw. This is what we recorded. So we did go through some, some um, 
you know, some of the gear, probably there's a little bit of EQ and things like that. But generally speaking, everything's pretty straight to tape without it, much treatment at all. So it gives us a perfect chance to to um, see what it sounds like if we can run it through the VR, VTRC and really set the EQ and the gain and the compression the way we might like to. So here's the raw inside kick drum. This is a AKG D112 inside of, of my kick, which is an old Slingerland um, club date. It's a kick from the 1960s or something, but you can hear it has that classic kind of basketball y quality to the audio because it's literally inside a giant basketball. It's inside a giant kick drum. And so all that sounds bouncing around in there. So if I, what, I, what I've got now is I've got the VTRC set up so that it's running out of Pro Tools to the VTRC and then back in. So we can use it as an insert so that we could check out what it sounds like easily on each track. So let me set that up. If I go here to five and I do that, then now the VTRC is actually on this track. So now if I play it, you should hear that and I can start messing with some of the different settings here. So yeah, you can clearly hear that it is in the signal path. I should point out that one thing about the VTRC is it doesn't have a master bypass, which I think ultimately makes sense because you're coming in through mic pre's. How are you going to bypass the mic pre? You know, you're not going to hear the mic. So they do give you bypass for the EQ where you can take it out. They also give you bypass for the two different compressors and take them out. But you don't have like one setting where you can kind of hear a before and after. But what I can do is I can bypass the actual plug-in. So if I just come up here, if I stop, I can just turn the plug-in off and then turn it back on and we're going to hear the very tube. I mean, excuse me, we're going to hear the VTRC. All right, dig it. So let's just jump in and I'll start messing with the sound and we'll sort of see what kind of sounds we can get out of this. So you see you've got, I'm going to, I'm going to bring up the output so it's a little closer to where we started. Let me turn this off. Let me get a little bit of a match level to start. Great. I, I get the feeling that all the way up here is close to unity. I could be wrong about that, but it seems like that's approximately right. So then with your different inputs, we've got the clean input here. Let me turn, take the EQ out and take the compression out. All right. So this is a clean input. Also, and you can see the preamp. So I've got the meter on preamp right now. So as I bring up this clean input, you can see I can kind of hit, hit my zero with it. Or I can bring up the dirty input. And actually, there's nothing. So I think this is a gain before this is the way this works. But just listen to how these sound a little different. If I crank that. Definitely hear a little bit of crunch in there. Turn this back down, turn this up more. Of course, if I just go too hot, then it just sounds like it's blowing up the output, so. All right, so now I'm gonna mess with the EQ too and see what we got, so pop this EQ in. Um, let's start by doing something I might do to a kick drum. I might suck out some of this two to 300. Hear how it makes it sound that makes that kick sound a whole lot more modern. Put it on 300, and it's pretty nice. You still get to keep some of that low end. That's out. That's back in. You hear how it tightened up the kick drum just by pulling out all that mid range that's bouncing around inside the kick. Then you could go, you know, boost some low end if you want. And you really hear it's getting some some nice bass in the kick. Um, I'd, I typically wouldn't boost at 120. I'd, I'd probably stay below 100 for my low end boost on this. And just try and get some of that body of the sound underneath, you know. There's clearly overdoing it. <laughs> um, and then let's boost some of the highs too. So I might, you know, be up in the three to 5K range Start boosting the high, and you hear how that beater comes through? Now take the EQ out. Listen to that. Listen to how much better our kick sounds already with nothing more than some EQ on it. 
Now, of course, if you overdo the high end, you're going to end up with a kick that sounds might sound too modern for your production. You know, let's say your production is a little more traditional soul or blues or something. You may want to split the difference on all this stuff. You know, you may still want some low end, but you might not want to totally boost all those. So listen, there's the original, kind of boxy, kind of mid rangey. There's the new version. Again, we're not bypassing the input. This is the line level in here, input here. But this allows us to get more saturation on the uh, transformer. Whoops, got to watch out for those peaks. All right, so then speaking of which, because there's peaks in there, let's go ahead and start bringing in the compression and listen to what that sounds like too. So I'm going to just experiment. You know, we're going to probably hear a bunch of versions that don't sound very good till we get to some that do sound good, you know. So here's the very tube compression. Oh, also, let's look at the meter. There's our there's our uh, meter with the EQ because he said we can add like up to 15 decibels of, of boost and stuff here. So like if you really crank the low end, you see that meter takes off, and obviously that doesn't sound good when it's cranked up that much. Uh, but now we can go to compression, and you can see it's the needle's already moving. It's already starting to gain. So if I back that down, it's as if the threshold is way up. It's kind of a reverse in a way. So in other words, you turn this up and you get more compression on your sound. Now it's not an auto gain, so do that and you hear the sound goes way down because it's over compressing now. But um, over compressing is also a good way to really hear what's going on. So now we got to also pay attention to these. So let's try the slow mode, which means it's going to be a slower attack and you're going to get more transient punching through, I think. And you can really hear that. Now we're just on the very tube compressor for now. But watch the difference between the slow attack and the fast attack. So the fast attack, if I leave the setting the same and I just switch attacks, it instantly becomes too much compression. So I might back this off to a more appropriate amount of compression there, I might even need to bring up the output gain slightly. And again, you can just use your ear. So that's one sound of a kick there. Here, let's, let's add some more highs because it's also the compression tends to um, sort of roll off the highs on your sound a little bit. So you may want to bring up some more attack. You may want to pull out some more mids. I gotta be careful with lows. So I'm doing this in headphones, which would probably be similar to a lot of your home studio situations as well. Um, so I'm, I'm not gonna try and super judge the low end on the whole thing right now, but you know, I'd probably crank it up in the speakers to really make some decisions about that. But so then here's the slow version. To me, I feel like I'm getting more more punch, more transient that way. And then here's auto in the middle where it's like, you know, trying to do everything for us. Again, I got to back down the compression. And that sounds groovy too. That sounds much more controlled. So um, sometimes, you know, you want situations where you're like, you know what, I don't want the drums to take over my mix. I want them to be really, really controlled by the compression. And that may be a good way to go. I tend to lean towards stuff like this, like immediately as soon as I put that in, I'm just hearing more punch because the compressor is not acting as quickly too, you know? So I dig that. But let me show you some different things. So, you know, crank it way up. Now let's hear that sizzly way up, way up high when I go up to 12K and crank it. So I don't know if that's something you would do. It's again, it's a, it's a choice you can make, but, um, and again, this is EQ before compression. Just use your ear with this stuff. So then here's um, compression before EQ. So now the compression's sort of like doing whatever it's gonna do, and then it hits the EQ. EQ before compression. 
compression before. That's really subtle right now. All right, so w w the settings that I have right now are not showing us like a huge difference between those two sounds. Um, so let's go over and check out the opto compressor now. Here, I'll probably stick with the EQ comp before compression because that's typically, if I was recording a kick, I'd probably get the mic pre going, get some EQ on it, hit a compressor, go to tape that way, you know, if I was going to do it. So here's the uh, opto compressor in. Again, we're on the slow setting. And then we'll compare that to the very tube compressor. So the very tube seems to do more compression and it's, you know, it's got, it's a little bit spongier with the tube, which could be a cool thing. You know, whereas the opto is solid state. It's an optical sensor. That's got a nice attack to it right there. That's pretty groovy. No compression at all. And that sounds good too. You know, the thing with drums, of course, is like, if you've got, um, if you've got a really consistent drummer, you may not want compression. You may, you may be actually getting a very consistent tone out of the kick and not need it. But um, here's both in there. Probably got to back this off. Fast is too much for me. Auto is probably too much, and I, I like the slow version. And then if I pop out our compression or our EQ again, so you can compare. There's our original. There's our a little bit more hyped. Might be a tiny bit too much high into, but um, pretty cool, you know. That really gives us a more usable kick in our final mix. So let's go to the next track. See what we got. So we're gonna turn off this guy. Get out of the kick. Let's go listen to what it will do on a snare drum. All right, dig it. Let me move this guy out of the way. Here's the snare drum. Again, here's the raw snare. Sounds groovy. I think we cut it through my CalRec with some EQ on it, but we didn't do any compression, I don't think. Not, not as far as I remember. Now here's enabling it. And let's sort of see what we get. So let's take the EQ and compression out. And let's uh, back that guy off. So already just saturating that input. I mean, it's getting louder too. So watch out, you don't get fooled just by the loudness. But the, um, you know, put this on preamp. This saturating that mic pre, or the line input in this case, through the transformers is a different sound than just going clean, I think, right? A little crunchier that way. Or cleaner this way. And again, it's up to your taste, you know? All right, so then let's try the EQ. So pop the EQ in. Again, let's check out the low cut first, even. Um, and even the face flip. Let's check the face flip. Since the snare is soloed, you're not very likely to hear that difference. But you may. Because it literally is the speakers in your uh, on your speakers or your earphones going a different direction. Um, so all right, so let's pop the EQ in. Start with some brightness because this is a 57 on top of a snare, so it typically needs some brightness added to it. That gets some nice snap right there. Listen to that. That's the original. That's just adding some of that. So that's killer, you know? All right, and then let's try, I don't know if we would really suck any mids out. Probably not. You know, so one thing you can do is you could just go extreme and just scroll through and see if anything goes away that you're glad of. I could actually pull a tiny bit of 300 out, I think. And then a lot of times on a snare, I might actually want to cut the, the low lows, like 80 hertz or even 160, and then boost some of the 200. So again, here's bypass. Watch out for volume matching. EQ. 
I'll bring the output down to match a little more. Bypass, EQ. So um, that sounds pretty groovy already. Now, oh, and the opto was in. I'm sorry, I didn't realize I left that in, but let's see if it was doing much. Not really moving the needle yet, so let's go for more compression. Let's try some extreme. So here's a lot of compression. Turning it up. Start this over again. There's no compression. That's a lot of compression. I I find this is these compressors are really great um, for vocal settings, which are great instruments kind of stuff. Um, I don't. I'm not. I'm not noticing it be like a substitute for 1176, for example. So it's not necessarily doing that super super fast kind of aggressive close mic thing but it does still sound really nice you know and and it's what it, what it was great for also we'll get to the Coles ribbon mic is um, what you can do with your room mics so there's the tube compressor and there's the fast setting Again, here's uh, no EQ and no compression. And then here's enhanced snare drum. Pretty cool. So yeah, you could definitely take your tracks one at a time, just kind of enhance them and treat them um, while, after you've recorded a session. So that's, that's what I'm doing here. I'm not actually taking the time to re-record it in because I wanna just um, keep moving through all these different sounds with you. Uh, but let me take you to the coals, which is the the uh, overhead that we used on this drum set. And I do find this works great for that. So let me pull that one up, get the insert going, and we'll give it a listen. Again, here's the raw Coles mic. It's my ribbon Coles 4038 on top of the drums, looking down. Okay, so there you go. That's the original sound. Now we bring this in and we start out making sure uh, that our compression and stuff is off and EQ, and then we'll sort of see what we got. And I'll put the low cut out, I'll leave our phase in, um, we're in line input and we'll just start messing with these levels. So that sounds very saturated like that for sure. Switch to the cleaner one, a little bit more transient. To sort of compare both. Great, and then let me try bringing in some EQ. Back these guys off. A lot of times I might brighten up the top of a Coles. It's a ribbon mic. Listen to how much I can brighten that mic. Listen to how much I can crank that 7K shelf and it still sounds smooth. Amazing, and then let's go way up high. So there's. Actually, we can't really because the Coles doesn't have much information above 16K, but you can still hear the shelf working at 16K, 12K, bypass on the EQ, bring it in for the Coles, 10K, bypass, bring it in. That's pretty awesome. Um, you can suck out different frequencies and see if there's anything you don't want. I doubt it. Um, yeah, maybe that you might be getting a little bit too much body out of the snare on the coals. You might want to pull a little out like that. Really, again, it's a taste thing. But that does sort of clear it up. And then you can add, you can add more lows too if you want. That's 80. Um, you can also cut at 80 and boost the lows. Watch this. So you still hear that shelf up to the 80 point. So no cut, no boost, or cut 80 and boost some 80. You know, same thing for 120. No cut, no boost. Actually, it's not, this 120 here and 160 there, but that's close. So cut 160 and boost 120.
and you just got you get a slightly different low end. It's, it's pretty subtle on this one, but anyway. So then again, going into compression, let's try the very tube. We'll pull up pull up the compression so we can see what the meter's doing. See how that sounds really cool for a ribbon mic? Sounds really awesome for that. Um, it really brings out the room and makes that mic exciting. Now if I take the EQ and the compression out, okay, we were louder with our signal there, so let me, let me turn up the output too. A little tricky to do comparisons, so you want to level match. But that's, that is a controlled, punchy, clear sound out of the overhead versus the original input, which is kind of murky, you know, muddy sounding. So that's pretty sweet, you know. And then if you want to try the opto compressor, again, maybe you get a slightly harder edge to the attack of the sound, which is pretty groovy. All right, cool. Let's go to another instrument. Let's take it to, um, here's a good one, classic. I, now, I think we, oops, I just panned that. Let me put it in the middle. Here, I think we did cut this possibly through some compression. So we'll see if there's room for more compression, but a tambourine is a great example of an instrument that you really need to have the right kind of compression and EQ and tone going for if you want it to sit right. So here's the original tambourine. And then here is let me see if I can just scoot this down. Great, I can just move it. So this, now we're putting this, so this here, this number five is our insert. It's going out Pro Tools 5 and back in Pro Tools 5 so that we can you know, go through this unit. So that's, that's what I'm using, which I explained at the beginning. But here's the tambourine, treating that with some different sounds. Listen to how beautiful the bright top is there. And again, tambourines do have some mid-ranges, which sometimes you wanna get rid of. Just crank that top. Let's now smooth that is on the tambourine. Original. EQ. And again, you can also saturate that input if you want to get a little more crunch out of that tambo. Awesome. Now let's check out the compression. Opto. Probably have to boost the compression here. Nice. No compression, no EQ. Bring it in. Might actually even be a little too bright now. And again, you just want to use taste. If you want more of a mid-range sound to your tambo, 4K. Oh, it's compression EQ. Here's EQ compression. So here's bypass on EQ. There's some bright tambo. Here's the very tube. Original. EQ and compression. Pretty awesome. All right, Groovy, let's go to bass. Uh, bass is right here. And this, I believe, is just a DI. So um, it's a pretty good sounding bass DI to begin with, but um, I think we can do some cool treatment to this to really enhance it too. So here is the original bass tone. All right, great. So obviously played with the pick. Um, let's put this in and see what kind of sounds we get. So again, we'll take the compression back out and everything. Um, not sure what setting we're going to want for the bass. We might be going for auto on this one in a minute, but uh, we'll start by getting this EQ or the uh, this uh, input dialed in and sort of see what sounds we get. So there's saturating a little bit. Saturating that input transformer. Check my input level. Original. And then through this. All right, great. Now let's bring the EQ in. You can really bring 
in some lows at 80 hertz, which is groovy. What if you want to cut and boost? So cutting at 80, boosting at 80. I can really boost it. You get a different low end. It's, it's almost like getting a little more controlled low of the fundamental. I don't know whether I like it better or not, but yeah, it's kind of cool, you know, or just boost lows all together all the way down to the bottom. The nice thing about this, this whole playing this game of cutting the lows and then boosting is you're also cutting out the subs and the kind of junk below the bass that really is just screwing up your mix in the final result. Um, whereas if you just boost a shelf of 80 and below, you're, you're boosting the lows that you want in, in the bass, but you're also boosting everything below it that may just be clouding up the, uh, the clarity and your low end and your punch and stuff. But let's just keep experimenting with this, with these tones. So this is now the high shelf is on 1.5. boost some mids there like 2k I mean there's already a lot of mids in this bass tone anyway but listen how clear that is pretty amazing all right and then so let's say we have too much of these mids and we're like man we got to scoop that out let's back that guy out let's hunt around for that's that mid frequency on the bass Watch out for your lows, too. Okay, so what I've got, here's the original bass. And what I've done is added a little top for some clarity there, just for fun boosted some lows, also cutting 80 hertz, so we're getting a bump sort of above 80 hertz, uh, maybe probably at 90, and cutting some of these mids from that. So that's kind of fun, you know? Original, with the EQ added. And then let's try the compression. So here's the very tube. Let's try the auto. Going kind of extreme. Take the EQ out. It's real no nosy and nasally and honky, but it smooths up when you start sucking those mids out and stuff. And adding some top, hard to say which kind of top you need, it depends on the song too. And then the compression, so then here's opto compression. So an LA-2A is an example of a, of a compressor you might use on a bass quite often. Pretty cool. So then let's also try the EQ before and after the compression. There's compressing it and then EQing it. And there's EQing it before compression. I find EQ before compression tends to give you a little bit more of an aggressive attack to the sound, which can be a cool thing, you know? All right, dig it. So that's bass. Let's move on from there. And let's check out my electric guitar. So we'll just, uh, since I multi-miked it, we'll just go ahead and just take the 57, which is a classic that you might use. Here is the original 57 sound. Um, this is bypassed. That was a lot of fun to play. All right, so here is, um, again, that's me playing guitar on that one, this song. This song was 
uh, and in inspiring for me to play. And I was trying to do a part that was so hard for me to get right. I had to act like a spaz while I played it in order to uh, not get it in my own way. <laughs> I probably do that a lot. All right, so here's um, here's my guitar, the 57 on my amp. This is an old Gibson Falcon, um, and I think it was a, a Gibson Melody Maker guitar. And then I'm running it through the Tegler, so let's see what kind of sounds we can get. We'll take the EQ out, we'll take the compression out, and we'll just start messing with levels. <laughs> Cool, and then let's listen to some EQ. All oh, right, I still had the 80 hertz roll off, which can be quite appropriate for an electric guitar, but we'll listen with it in and out. You can really hear those lows in there. There's 160, giving a lot of focus. There's 80, leaving in some lows, so we'll try that. Oops. Turn on the EQ. So this is the shelf down at 1.5. It's pretty sweet. Um, I'll experiment with pulling different stuff out. thing to point out is because we don't have a true true bypass necessarily um, because it doesn't really apply in this this case it means we can't really level match to do an in out comparison so I have to do that more with the plugin if I wanted to which is why you'll see me like engage the EQ and compression but then bring the level back up to just kind of manually compensate so um, just know that that's why I'm doing that <laughs> cool um so that's an awesome thing i think i could definitely use that on guitar too let's cut to acoustic guitar which is always a great one to check all this eq and compression on too i don't think we need any of these leftover reverbs so let me pull this down so that we can hear it and i'll bypass it so you can hear the original acoustic okay so here's the raw acoustic sound which is a roswell pro audio delphos u67 capsule microphone um, with no pad and cardio mode, and I'm playing, I'm strumming a 1979 mahogany um, acoustic guild. All right, groovy. So then let's hear it through the Tegler. Mm -hmm. 
So again, no EQ, no compression yet. Probably gaining up a bit, so I'm on a, on a level match a little closer. All right, so this is worth noticing. Right now I have no EQ in, no compression. I'm actually cutting 80 hertz. And just by the act of going through this gorgeous sounding unit, the acoustic already sounds better. Just hitting the, the transformers and the tubes. Listen to this. And then again, here is the bypassed original sound. And then here's going through the, the VTRC. Listen to how that top end glistens. And bear in mind, we're talking about coming out of my, you know, my DAW, my Pro Tools, through converters into this, back in through converters again, and it still sounds more pure as if I had recorded it well the first time, which is pretty cool. That's really encouraging. But I'll keep messing with EQ here and we'll try some compression on the acoustic. So check this out, Rockstars. I'm at 24 kilohertz right now, shelving it up, and you totally hear the difference in the top end. 24 is above the threshold of human hearing. We don't hear frequencies above 20 hertz, but we hear the effect of what this does. And of course, the shelf is probably rolling down into the audible range as well. But it just shows you why uh, having this very high frequency is so useful. <laughs> Okay, so when I bypass the EQ and the, the compressor, the level goes up some, but, but that's because this is a passive EQ for the, um, the Pultec. So we're actually cutting some frequencies out here. Um, and then the compressor, compressor is also compressing, which means it's lowering the gain. So we have to, to do a little makeup. That's again why we have to manually tr try and match the levels. But what a sweet sound. I mean, the top end on the acoustic guitar at that 20 hertz and 24 and everything, it's just gorgeous. I mean, uh, that is hard to do by dialing in a plug-in in a DAW. You know, it's one of the really sweet things about um, the Tegler audio manufacturer equipment particularly, but using, you know, like the VTRC is that you have that, that sweet, sweet high end on your EQ for enhancing your tracks. All right. So let's take it to vocals. I think vocals is our last thing we should check out and um, we'll get into some cool stuff like setting the tone and the compression, but we'll also get into experimenting with some DSing and see what we get. So let me set this up. Here is our raw vocal track. I'll bypass this plugin so you can hear what we got. Um, sort of take it to this verse going into the chorus and see what that sounds like. Also, let me make this big so you guys can see it. Then. I hit my head really hard a couple times. I think about that when I want to burn the bridge I'm on. All right, so um, cool, funky, interesting lyrics here. Again, this is poetry that's been re-sculpted into song um, through some of my best friends up in St. Louis. So a lot of fun to work on this music. And Sean's a great singer. So he's got a great tone. This would have been singing on, again, the Roswell um, 
Pro Audio Delphos U67 microphone, uh, probably no pad with a cardioid mode, and then um, maybe going through my Calrec Mic Pre with a little bit of compression on it as well. But let's see what else we can do by listening through the Tegler, and we'll, we'll engage this and see what kind of sounds we can get. Maybe we'll just end up only wanting to DS things, you know, if it already sounds pretty great as is. But we'll zero out our EQ, we'll get that compression off, and we'll just look for levels. I hit my head really hard a couple times. I think about that when I want to burn the bridge I'm on. So that was pretty cool. So that's just gain now. Um, and if we're level matched or close, you may notice that the Tegler is adding like a saturation, which is going to bring the vocal forward in the mix. I hit my head really hard this a is couple bypassed. times. I think about that when I want to burn the bridge I'm on. Okay, great. Now we're going to bring the Tegler in and listen to how this saturation just brings the vocal forward sonically. I hit my head really hard a couple times i think about that when i want to burn the bridge i'm on that is awesome we're not even adding eq we're actually cutting 80 hertz still we're not adding any eq we're not adding any compression yet and it's just this saturation of the transformer that brings out all that harmonic richness in the vocal and makes it sound so awesome um, which of course is great for mixing because it means that um, it's going to be much easier to audibly hear the vocals in the track when you're mixing if you've got that kind of presence on things. So uh, let's try messing with some EQ and see what we get too. I hit my head really hard a couple times. I think about that when I want to burn the bridge I'm on. I hit my head really hard a couple times i think about that when i want to burn the bridge i'm on that is pretty sweet this is so right now i'm i'm cutting a little 700 just for the heck of it and i'm boosting 16k i hit my head really hard a couple times and bypass i think about that when I want to burn the bridge I'm on. But that is a beautiful top end. It's very smooth. It's very, it's crankable. Crankable high end is what this thing's all about. That's what, that's why I like it so much. I hit my head really hard a couple times. All right, great. So then let's look at the compression too. So I'll, I'll pop in the very tube and we'll see what kind of stuff we get. I hit my head really hard a couple times. I think about that when I want to burn the bridge I'm on. So now you're noticing that I'm, I'm using the tube compression. I'm also pushing the needle a whole lot more now with a vocal where there's more room for that. And I'm also in the fast mode. We'll experiment with some of these different ones. But with a vocal track, I find uh, it's really, it can be really great in pop music if you can begin to push the compression a lot and then bring up that output. So you're really like compacting the vocal and bringing it forward. But it's got to be done in a way that's really pleasant sounding and transparent and doesn't like, you know, kind of screw up the, the, the dynamics that you appreciate about the vocals or make it sound over compressed. You know, you don't want it to sound squashed. You just want it to sound awesome. I hit my head really hard a couple times i think about that when i want to burn the bridge Let's i'm bypass, on and then here we go again i hit my head really hard a couple times you hear how it brings forward the sibilance i think about the that consonants. when i want to burn the bridge i'm on all right then let's check the same thing in auto i hit my head really hard a couple times i think about that that is pretty awesome so that is sort of letting the consonants and the the sibilance through that we want but it's controlling the the volume of the you know the the bloom of the note you know the really the chesty part of the note that's loud so you know it's con it's making it so it doesn't just get loud and blow up your mix um let's check out the opto compressor and see what that does too i hit my head really hard a couple times 
I think about that when I want to burn the bridge I'm on. And then fast mode. I hit my head really hard a couple times. I like the auto. I think about that when I want to burn the bridge I'm on. And that's your slow. I hit my head really hard a couple times. I think about that. I think without a doubt, auto is the right one for that. So um, let's check out the de-essing feature as well. We'll also listen to some compression before EQ so you can hear that. So let me get a good sound going and we'll, we'll kind of work with it from there. I hit my head really hard a couple times. I think about that when I want to burn the bridge so I'm on. So that was out in the very tube and the opto. I hit my head really hard. I actually think I prefer just one or the other. I hit my head really hard a couple times. Awesome. So that's groovy. So then let's try compression before EQ for the same sound. I hit my head really hard a couple times. And then EQ before compression. I hit my head really hard a couple times. Awesome. By the way, I don't know if you can see this in the video, but it's nice and warm because it's a, it's got tubes in there. It's awesome. Um, all right, Groovy. So then let's go to, we'll turn off the EQ, but we'll leave EQ into compression. So that means this will act as a side chain for the compressor. So here's a de-essing example. I don't know if it's quite as, you know, it's a little bit subtle right now, but if we turn this off, then we have regular compression on the vocals, um, or maybe we can just turn off all compression. And then if I flip these up, we'll get compression with the side chain. So we'll try that. So this is the raw vocal. Name the first one. Name the first one. So you hear the S in first one. Now if I flip these guys up and I'm boosting this 5K and up, and I'm also sucking out, so maybe I'll leave that alone where it was. Name the first one. Name the first one. And then again, no, no treatment. Name the first one. And then adding all the compression as, and sidechain. Name the first one. Here's no treatment. I give you a hard road song, it's called. And then here's a little bit of de-essing. I give you a hard road song, it's called. The Subtle but smooth, but, uh, but definitely a cool thing that can help you out if you need it somewhere. And again, what a sweet sound on the vocals overall. So um, pretty excited. A lot of st different stuff we tried there. Uh, we listened to it on drums, kick, snare, overhead, bass, guitars, vocals, acoustic guitars. A lot of the places where I might really want to have a great EQ and a great compressor to kind of enhance the sound. All right, Rockstar, so this is the other thing I wanted to show you that's really exciting. So once you've got a sound with the VTRC that you're really digging, you can engage a plugin on a track to recall that sound later. So let's say you took your audio for a particular track and you decided to get a bunch of settings and print it through the VTRC and then commit it to your session, but you wanted to have some sort of record in case you just needed to tweak it slightly later in the mix, you could pull this plugin up and you can actually do all these settings here. And you can recreate what the settings were that you used to get that particular sound, which is just super cool. You know, add your low end, find that 20K shelf for your acoustic guitar, crank that up. And then that plugin, it's not controlling the unit, but what it's doing is it's living on the um, track that you actually just enhanced. So it's a great way for you to be able to keep a record of all the settings you used and recall it later to. Um, do a tweak or just to recreate that sound if you want to, if it's just part of your mix. And then here, if we jump over to the website for Tegeler Audio Manufacturer, I've included the link right below this video. You can go check out their page and see all the different stories and uh, different reviews of all this gear. A lot of great, great people out there using it. You've got the, um, this one right here is a digital reverb unit called the Raum Zeit Maschine. Uh, then you also, it's a tube reverb too. This is the Schwerkraft Maschine, which is a compressor that will emulate all kinds of different compressors. Um, and it is, both those are digitally controlled by your DAW. So you can have a plug-in in Pro Tools that will actually dial in all the settings for you. Here's the VTRC. And um, 
I wonder if we can actually go right to that page. Yeah, great. So here's a page for the VTRC. Super important is that if you want to try it out in your studio, just come to the website. You can register now and get the, the uh, recording channel for 14 days without any commitment. You just click through and register, and it's probably going to want to know a little bit about who you are and, and where to send it to, and you set that up. And then they talk about the unit, tell you about its features and stuff like that. And again, at the very bottom, you got reviews. Uh, you can see a whole lot more than just mine. And then you've got downloads for the uh, the plugin too, where you can um, where you can uh, get that plugin installed for doing recalls and stuff. So super cool. They got a whole list of products here uh, that they're creating. Very cool stuff for your studio. And I highly recommend you check it out. I'm sure if you get one for your studio, you're going to love it. So thanks so much for watching, Rockstar. It's been an absolute blast hanging out with you. I know this was a long one, but I really wanted to just dig into each sound and let you really hear what it sounds like. So um, I've included links below that you can come back and just click through and go right to each sound as you want if you want to skip through and, and just kind of hear what each sample is. So a reminder, if you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to our YouTube channel like the video, hit the notification bell so that you can be alerted when there's new videos coming out from Recording Studio Rockstars. And most importantly, drop in a comment below. Tell us what you think about the sound of this thing. You know, how, what did you like about this? Where do you think it could be improved if you wanted to? Uh, what would you do with it in your studio if you had one? And, and how do you think you would find it useful? I mean, I think it's awesome for recording through. I know we didn't plug mics in today, but it's really cool that you can take your existing tracks in a session and run them back through after you've already done your best to record them and still enhance the sound even more. So one unit is like having a multitude of, of plugins. You know, it's the equivalent of that because you can put it on everything in your session if you want to. Thanks for watching, Rockstars. We'll see you guys in the next video.